it's time to focus on recovery. Let's get into it for the week beginning April 6th, 2020. everybody it's michelle patterson here with angel souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning april 6th 2020 so this week is about recovery and as i explained before okay you're not supposed to touch your face i know but every time i read i start to get face tingles so it's it's a thing all right but um I, i record these ahead of time so that i have time to edit and get the content out to you so i i do not know at this point what happened last week. If we come up closer to time and I need to make another video, I definitely will. But um, right now, the message as I'm just kind of looking out um, is about recovering. And that could be recovering from a trauma. It could be recovering. We still haven't learned. um, Yeah, we still haven't quite learned how to change things. I think we're still very much in this mindset of, why do these things happen or why does the world feel so out of control why why do you know it's that whole thing of why do things happen to people and uh we can't start looking outside of our well we've always looked outside of ourselves but don't keep looking outside of yourself to you know try to find the answers the answers are within us and that's what we're trying to understand and trying to learn we have been warned to watch out for the unexpected, definitely, and uh, to see what what needs to change from that. Now, automatically, people will start to go, oh, we need social change, we need this, we need that, we need, you know, here's all the mental solutions to what's going on. Instead of bringing that energy inside and saying, no, how can we change the structure in here to make things better out there? We are the projectors, okay? The reality that we see is the one that we're putting out there. So if we don't like what's going on, again, I'm curious to see how all this is playing out as well because I'm getting all these messages and signs and things like that. So there could be something very destructive that has happened or that might be occurring soon that would set everybody on edge. However, if we all do what we've been talking about, we can make that not happen. We can make that not happen. So whatever fear that you are living in right now, be aware that we are projecting that out into the world and it's going to manifest. We're talking about loving people and having a connection and realizing how hard it is maybe to have compassion for everybody. Again, as we get up closer to this week, if I, you know, if you only see one video, there you go. It was just this one video. But if I need to make a follow-up, I definitely will. But, um, or address anything. <sighs> clean up. I, I, I just keep feeling clean up. And, and it feels like there's a very directed hatred towards someone. My ears are, okay, so if you're an empath and you're even a medium, you know that you get the ringing in your ears, you get all that stuff. That My ears are going crazy right now. And there are all these different faces flashing before me, and it could be in the news. We'll see. You know, I don't really like to do the predictive thing here because people don't know how to take predictive readings. Uh, If it doesn't turn out exactly as someone predicted, everyone's like, oh, you're a fraud. They're not a fraud. Uh, consciousness is ever evolving and changing and you heard what you wanted to hear, <laughs> right? So I tried to even go down that road, but I'm seeing all these different faces and people wanting to put energy this way and say, you know, that person's evil, this, that, and the other. And we're not realizing that we needed to do something, we needed to put something out there, right? That's better than what we've seen. And we're still working on that. Still working on that. So if you wanna blame doctors, if you wanna blame the government, if you wanna blame military, if you wanna blame, you know, whoever you see as the enemy, you are in for a very big wake up call. This almost has, for some people out there, the feeling of whatever you've accused someone else of doing, you realize you've been doing the same thing. And 
I know we love to call those people hypocrites. <laughs> and yes, it's a bad thing, I guess, to be hypocritical, but we all are at times because we're numb to ourselves, right? So sometimes, and it can be very easy to look at what's playing out in front of us and be able to analyze that, but we're emotionally attached to what's happening in here. And so we might avoid it. We might, you know, just not even see it. So there's a big wake up call. This might feel a little icky. Accountability feels icky. Don't you say that I'm to blame for what's going on out in the world. It's not about blaming, okay? It's about Stay with me now. What's the A word? Awareness. Okay. <laughs> Being aware what's coming out of our hearts. We see it a lot. And social media has been very good in some aspects, very bad in others. And one of the bad sides of it is that it gives people a platform to beat other people up without any accountability because no one even sees your face. You could just stick a little thumbnail up there that's your dog. Okay, <laughs> or, you know, a meme or something, you know, like a, a thumbnail or something like that. That's not a person, right? Uh, and it'd be very easy for them to slither off and, you know, get away with it. We need to not, I was about to say, you know, not give in to the people who just want to be negative because they see, th there's a difference between calling out a truth and just trying, just seeing the world through a dark lens and just assuming, sorry, I got wardrobe malfunction here. Um, <laughs> uh, and just seeing the world as, you know, a big bowl of poison. And, you know, it's all about everybody else doing wrong. And if everybody just understood and saw things the way I did, then it would be perfect. That's not true. And how weird of you to say that. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so we need to start having some awareness here about essentially what we're putting out there, what we're putting out into the world. What do we believe about ourselves, our place in this world? What do we believe about the world around us? Where's the toxic, the toxic energy coming from? It's coming from everybody else. It's not me. No, it's coming from you too. And me. What? What are you talking about? I'm a good person. I'm not saying that we're all bad people. What I'm saying is, is we don't understand our own power. And we've been like little kids with swords and not knowing what the heck we're doing. And now part of this recovery is understanding we need to learn how, who we are, number one, what we're comprised of, what is our capability, and what in the world have we been shooting out into the world? And how is it being reflected back to us now? When we do not take care of one another, when we do not take care of our kids, we've discussed this, things happen that are unpleasant and then they might grow up to be very maladjusted adults who act out. Maybe they do become part of our government, maybe they become our leaders, you know, political leaders. Maybe they become our religious leaders. Maybe they're your boss. We prime our kids to almost be robotic. And then we teach them that even when someone is supposed to love you, they could harm you in some of the more extreme cases. Or we teach them that love is conditional and that's normal. If you want me to love you, you need to go to this school and be, have this profession and be this kind of person. We're putting bad messages out there. And then when someone actually does end up becoming whatever out in the world that's supposed to be impressive, we go, wow, wow, you do hold all the power. When they don't. This is messy. This is so, so, so messy. We need to start with the kids. It's imperative and we need to go back and collect up all the children that have been lost. One of those children, one child is within you. 
So start with your own inner child and go back and collect that child up. Look at how you've been conditioned. Look at what you were taught. Not just the words. People love to focus just on the word that was said to them. Or maybe even the action, God forbid. We don't often look at the messaging that is unspoken. The parent that acts like the child is just so frustrating. Yeah, we don't have to live with my kid. Oh, okay, I got, I got you. I've been around some annoying kids. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I've been around some really annoying kids. But they don't deserve to be mistreated. We need to clean this up. The recovery is recovering yourself, caring for others, and looking out for all the kids. We need to do that without spoiling them. My generation completely got out there and tried to overcorrect. And then my gen- I don't know, listen, hey, yo. When I was in my 20s and people around me who were around my age were choosing to start their families, oh my goodness, you had to give up your seat for a child. Now, dang it, I always had to give up my seat for the adults. <laughs> I've really become an adult now I gotta give up my seat for the kids. What? I mean, what? (laughs) But these kids were being taught that they didn't have to respect adults. I went to an event somewhere and uh, they had these two youngish women, I, I don't know, I'd put them at like 17, 18 years old, working the drink stand at this event. And this older woman walked up and she said, um, which one of these sodas is diet? And these girls just like, you know, did the face like, I don't know. I didn't pour them. And the woman explained, I, I can't have sugar. So I, I want to have a diet soda or do you have water or something that I can drink? No, we, I don't, do you know where all that is? I don't know where that is. And they were being very, their tone was just, ugh, I just didn't love it. And they were being very disrespectful to this woman. Now I'm standing there walking up to this. I heard the whole thing. And the woman started to walk away. And I was like, hang on a second. (laughs) Anybody want to comment down below really quick before I finish this story about how well this went for these two teenagers? Not well at all. I said, I don't actually drink diet soda, but um, I wanted to make a point. So I said, I want a diet soda too. Well, we don't. And I want one that was freshly poured. This is unsanitary. All these cups just sitting out here. I don't like it. Um, (laughs) I'm I'm being facetious in how I'm saying this story, but I was just like, what are you standing here for? You have a, you have a little cooler back there. It was just like a picnic-y kind of thing, but you have a cooler back there, open it. And sure enough, oh my gosh, there was, there was soda. And I was like, I want a diet soda and get one for this lady too, please. Thank you. You know, like we need to, like my generation (laughs) raised those girls and, and they were just, ooh, all in their own little world. No need to show love to another person or concern. And then when they grow up to be adults that can't handle anything, who can't make good choices for themselves, we can't believe it. I don't know why my kids turned out that way. I don't either. I mean, I'm not a parent, so I don't know how that happens. But I mean, I have seen, I can speak to some things. I just know that the result wasn't good. All right. They they just can't believe that their kids turned out that way. Well, Michelle, what's the solution? Love. Been saying it a long time. Yeah, but you're so mean, Michelle. I'm not. And if you feel that way, look at it. What's the way? Peace. Yeah, but Michelle, you get stressed out too. I know. (laughs) These messages are for me too. Okay. And, you know, the, just again, think about days where you've had, let's say you're in a good mood. Okay. And you go out and you're smiling at everybody. I've used this example before and they smile back and it's just a nice free flow. We can have that. Okay. That's not, that's not an impossibility. But man, how often do we have to work around people who just, again, with the power struggles and they're just angry and they're hurting and that's what it is. People are hurting and we're not taking care of one another. 
I'm not saying save one another, but we're not, just a little bit of consideration goes a long way. In the example I was giving you about some stupid drinks sitting out, if that woman had walked up and these young ladies had acted like ladies, respectful young ladies, and smiled at her and said, um, you know what, not sure, but let me get you one. One second, I'll, I'll get you some. How different would that experience have been? It's not hard. It's not hard. I know when I'm having a bad day, I usually start out having a good day until I'm, you know, like most of you out there, I'm very sensitive, <laughs> right? Very sensitive. I'm all water sign except for my rising, uh, pretty much. But when I go out into the world, I can be very affected by people and their moods. Or if somebody, if I feel like I'm about to get violated, it does something to you. I gave the example, I don't remember if it was last week or the week before, about people trying to run me off, two, two men trying to run me off of a mountain road when I first moved here. <sighs> does something to you. We shouldn't be walking around in a world where we feel like the next person could be dangerous. That we have to live on the defensive. Part of the recovery is finding that peace and letting that peace come on out. All right, let's get some cards. Let's see what else we have. Clean up. I keep hearing clean up. I wonder if we're not. You know, for years, California always comes up. California, Washington, Oregon, you guys always come up. Under the sea, which unfortunately makes me think of the Little Mermaid song. But I think it's more serious than that. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, the plates shifting. Don't be scared. I mean, I, I want you guys to be aware, just not scared. Okay. Oh, 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 hang on. One of them fell. Where's my earring? <laughs> Hi. All right. This is what fell onto the floor. Rose quartz, inner child. This is why things happen the way that they do. So many of us have been injured as a child in one way or another. Maybe we're, as an adult, hanging on to the injury instead of going back and collecting up the child. You have to love. You have to love. You have to love. You cannot go another second without finding it. We're going to annihilate ourselves. For what? To be right? That's just dumb, okay? Stop it. Oh, you're probably not doing it, but like, <laughs> there are people out there doing it. Harming children because their own inner child was harmed. And every time they harm a child, it's them trying to work something out with their own inner child. That's what they were taught or the anger has taken them over. We talked about that. Running on fumes of fear. Go back to that inner child, okay? Next card we have. Another pink card. Okay, rhodochrosite acceptance. That's a big one, isn't it? Acceptance. I would even put in accountability. We've been talking about that too. But this acceptance, this is a very loving crystal. Actually, rose quartz is very loving. Rhodochrosite is very loving. It's all about the love, okay? <laughs> it's all about the love. But we have to accept, you know what? This is what happened to me as a kid. And it's not right for me. You know, I talk about this a lot. And you guys might say, well, how is every week all about healing the inner child? Because all of us, we do not honor innocence in this world. We harm it. We allow it to be harmed. We have to come to a place of acceptance about our experiences and then learn to move on from there and start healing. Okay. Petrified wood ancestors. Now, every time this card comes out, there are people out there who very much believe in the ancestral work by all means run with it. Um, I hear people say, how do I get in touch with the ancestors? And I'm like, how'd you hear about the ancestors? Are you, are you of a culture that communicates with the ancestors? Because there are a lot of belief systems that don't do that. 
everyone's seeking. And they hear it worked for someone else, and so they're jumping on that bandwagon. Do nothing unless it feels authentic. If you feel you can get information by looking at, you know, this ancestral journey, then do it. If you're doing it to mimic what somebody else did and it worked for them, not going to work for you. Why? You're not connected to it. You're just going through the motions. Do what feels authentic. Now, this also makes me, first of all, this is very grounding. It is looking at the past. It's looking at how we have it. It's looking at our abuse patterns. I just heard that. Looking at the abuse patterns. And for a lot of us, we are looking at what those patterns have been in our own lives, in our families. If you look back through different generations, now I was a very small child in the 80s, uh, mostly grew up in the 90s, but the 80s was, I just go back and watch, uh, I was just watching this about a month ago, I think, uh, Flight of the Navigator. Just watch the first few minutes of that movie and be wowed at what was acceptable, the things that are coming out of the kids' mouths, um, the fact that the kids are not buckled in the car, the kid just runs out the back of the station wagon, he, call, he calls his brother the R word. Um, you know, I mean, it's just so many things. It was such a different time. And it became, it was kind of like the milk carton generation. That's when the photos on the milk carton started happening. It was creepy. It was like, I grew up knowing full well at any point someone could snatch me up, right? Like, and just, it, it was, that was the kind of fear that we lived with. And it was like our innocence was under attack. And all the illness and all the maltreatment and mistreatment of the people who came before us was rushing into us like a giant wave. And then as I've talked about before, my generation grew up and tried to maybe heal their own inner child by spoiling their own. And not everybody, but in some examples, some of them grew up to not have any respect for other people, to have a sense of entitlement, to think that they're better than everybody else. That's not everybody. And honestly, if you get defensive about that, you're probably one of the people we're talking about. So there you go. Hi. Hi. What? <laughs> like, what? But you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we carry these things through, through our lives, through the family. Let's get another card. Fire agate creativity. This is healing the sacral chakra yet again. And um, I, this feels like burning up the hurt and burning up the past. This almost makes me think of like violet flame kind of stuff. All right. So getting your life force back, your sense of innocence, um, healing the emotional body. I don't like if fire is on here. I don't know if fires are starting. I don't know. I'm not getting anything on it. You can redirect the energy though. Yeah. Don't let any area of the world burn hot. Don't let any of any area of the world get too shaken. Don't let too let any area of the world get too emotional because that's where we get floods. We gotta balance this out, guys. All of us. All right, let's get the color card going here. On a lighter note, I am loving the return of the scrunchie. <laughs> And I like having my hair back during the videos. That way I don't have to mess with it. I'm like, keep rocking this ponytail. Yes. Unless I just got my hair blown out by a professional. I don't want it down. <laughs> oh, there's our card. Gray, learn to scan your body. The number is 29, which reduces to 11. So again, finding the peace within us. Being aware. What are your traumas? What do you need to heal? And this isn't so that you go into wailing victimhood, expecting everyone to feel sorry for you. People do that. People do that. This is about being honest. This is what I experienced. This is how it has affected me. My frequency matters. My frequency goes out into the world. 
and it blends with other frequencies. And then we create these things. But if you learn to scan your body, see where the tension is, see what comes up, get the right help, learn to connect with others. Be in this together. We can start to master, start to master our sense of being, master and understand what our real power is and what we are putting out into the world, what we are helping to manifest. We've been looking in the wrong places, guys. We have been looking elsewhere for what's right, right here, right here in front of us. And that's what we need to plug into. All right. So we're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.